motion and subject to the council's authority. Can you speak up? In closed session, there was an action brought forth pertaining to a uh, discipline regarding a member uh, subject to the council authority. A call for censure was made and a second was not, not given. Therefore, the action is closed without action. Okay, truth and taxation. You need to open the public hearing. Great. Andy, you want to give us the uh, statute for opening public hearing? Well, in this case, I, are we, we're officially back open as a council, mm -hmm. right? So, um, in this case, I would just say uh, a motion to second to open the, open the floor, and then a motion to second to close the public hearing, the truth taxation public hearing. Uh, motion to bring the session open. I'll second. Okay, motion to close uh, the council meeting for truth and taxation public hearing. Then we would open it. Yeah, open public hearing. I don't know if the video is going to go. Not going to work. That was the last. And the second? I'll second that one. Oh, sorry. So, so the first vote you just took was to reopen the council meeting. Okay. I got you. Oh. <coughs> Michelle? Aye. I would I and wait. Aye. Melissa? Aye. Much better for all. I don't think the video's going to run here because I think you're just going to have to just go with what's in the packet. Okay. It says it's there, but it's not doing anything. Mm. It was a video that was sponsored by the League of Minnesota Cities that just talked about the how the taxes are calculated. Oh, here we go. Maybe it will. Hey, hey. Elected 
officials who decide how much money a city needs to provide services for everyone who lives and works there. This is called the property tax levy, which is the total amount of money needed for property owners for cities to deliver services. School districts, counties, and watershed districts all do the same thing. They have elected leaders who decide how much money their groups need. Yesterday I went to the state capitol with my class to learn about state government. The state collects tax money too. The Minnesota legislature oversees how the property tax system works for all cities in the state. They tell cities and townships to pay for certain things. Cities and townships have no choice but to pay it. It's called an unfunded mandate. Sunshine, I said unfunded mandate for you. Play with me.
Okay. Um, open it up for any comments from the audience. What is the proposed levy going to be increased this year for the budget? Proposed levy will be a 2.28% increase. In the property tax. Property tax. The property tax. In the tax rate. It's a two point. I thought you'd get out of this, but. It <laughs> Hit the escape. I am. Um, it's not doing anything. And I told my last year's, how does that compare to what we, what you budgeted last year? Is that about the same or is that more or less? We have a, a, an increase a little bit. We'll walk through that if you want to do that now. We can walk through so it's when he gets out of that, she'll bring up the document. It's not really, it says it's not responding. We can refer to page 29 and 30 of your packet. <coughs> So this year, um, our actual final levy is the same as our as our uh, preliminary levy was, which is one million twenty-four thousand two hundred and forty-two dollars, which is about a ten percent increase um, over last year, as far as budget-wise or levy-wise. But because of our increase in our tax capacity, it's the um, tax rate itself has only got about a 2.28% increase. So the dollar amount is a 10% increase over last year's levy, but because of the increase in tax capacity for this year, it brings the tax rate to a 2.28% increase. If I can get it to come back up here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Page 30 shows kind of a, I guess what I'm just trying to figure out is what I'm looking at, you know, Let's say in a two hundred thousand dollar house, are you looking at a two hundred dollar increase, or are you looking at a, you know, fifty dollar increase? Um, so if you have a two hundred thousand dollar house, and you take fifty five, the new tax rate will be fifty five point fourteen percent. So you take two thousand times, or take take the fifty five percent times your two hundred thousand dollar house, and last year's tax rate was fifty three point. Um, I have it right in my hands. Whatever 55.14 minus 2.28% <laughs> is. So it's 53 something. So it's just the difference would be, you know, the 2% the, the higher. So here on this sheet, I kind of spelled it out. So here's our budget, our revenue and our expenditures um, for this year. And then um, here's what I was talking about. Our, our levy is 1 million, um, our proposed levy was 1,024,242. And that's what we had talked about the other night as far as leaving it the final levy, which actually is a 10% increase over last year. However, because of the change in the tax capacity, the increase in the tax capacity <coughs> went from like 1.7 million to 1.8. Um, it brings the tax rate to 55.14%, which is a 2.28% increase over last year. And the difference between last year and this year, um, the million dollars versus the 900 and some thousand from last year is we put 
extra money in our capital improvement fund to start funding projects that need to be done in the city, such as street repairs. Uh, we have a lot of streets in town. The big project, one of the big projects is this whole downtown area that has to be all redone, the, the streets and <coughs> the water and sewer lines in them. So we've been trying to start <coughs> building up our capital improvement fund where we have never been really putting that much money away. And if we don't start now, we're not sure how we'll pay for the projects that need to be done in the near future. And with the increase in the tax capacity um, this year, this is the time to, if you're going to raise it now, is the time to do it because it doesn't, even though you go 10% higher dollar-wise, the tax rate doesn't go up as high because of the increase in the tax capacity. Drew, did you get your tax proposal already? Yes. Okay. That should show you what your increase is and break it down by where your right county increase is and where your city increase is. And then uh, the school was actually uh, a decrease overall. I know mine was an increase of $37 overall. Kevin? Yeah, Sorry. So how does our tax rate, you know, the 55 point one four approximately compared to like surrounding cities. Do we know that? I don't know compared that. Compared to like prior years even? I don't know. So um, they looked at that before, right? Yeah, last year our tax rate was 53 something. It was like I said, it's 2.28% higher this year. I don't know what Buffalo's, I didn't. I know Buffalo was going in at a 14% increase, but I don't know what their tax rate was. I'm assuming they also had an increase in their tax capacity. I know Waverly had a big tax capacity increase, so um, their tax rate probably would go down a little bit this year, but they were going to up their taxes to try to get in line, so and, uh, I don't know for sure. Those are the only towns I talked to. And would it be good to get comparisons of some sort? I mean, just to have an idea for the thing is is you can get comparisons and you can compare it to other cities but I guess the bottom line is is what I, what I was just saying was at some point we need to start building our capital improvement fund so that we can do the projects that we need to do fix the streets that need to be fixed we've put everything on hold for like 10 years because of the economy and at some point we have to look at you know, they just, they need to be done. I mean, some of the streets are literally starting to fall apart. I mean, Sean, Sean knows what's happening with some of them there. Sean, do you want to elaborate a little bit on the capital improvement plan and, and some of the major projects that are outlaid on that over the next 25 years? I certainly can, Mr. Mayor. Um, Justin and I actually, all the commissions and staff and consultants we've all been working on a capital improvement plan pretty much on and off for 2016 and uh, we've identified several projects that are uh, preliminary going to be slated to hopefully be done between now and 2030. Uh, I was going to get this go for adoption tonight however I'm still working on some financing aspects of it um, I don't want to bring this without having an idea how we're going to pay for it, so we're still working on that. Uh, one of the items is we're looking at new well and well house, replacing 80 year old well house and wells that were drilled in the 70s. Um, also, the 50,000 gallon water tower that sits here in Lions Park that's 86 years old. Those two projects alone are roughly 1.5 million. Um, original town site, which consists of Second Street Center, uh, Emerson, Dakota, street going to the school, and then one going past the uh, Lutheran Church. That's a uh, I'm not sure if everybody's aware or not. Center Avenue and Second Street South are out here is considered a county road. 
So we're capitalizing with the Grant County uh, to do that uh, cooperative project that they are going to, in their capital improvement project, they've slated 600000 towards that project. Um, and then they, once that project is done, uh, those streets will be turned over to the city. That project alone is $4.38 million. That's all utilities that are approaching 50, 60 years old. Um, some of the other ones, we got uh, left turn lanes on Highway 12. Um, MnDOT's going to be scheduled to come through here to redo Highway 12 in 2021. Um, to extend the, to widen the street, do some curb work and add turn lanes to Highway 12 going east. That's 610,000. Um, then we got Trunk Highway 25 going south. That's that's preliminary scheduled for 2018. That consists of some walking trail, um, some right of way acquisition, and um, widening of shoulders. <laughs> And also about 850 feet of water and sewer main uh, that needs to be um, replaced. That's 750,000. Um, that's large and big main ticket items. And those issues have been, there's a long time that we have not done major issues. I think the last major issue we did was Clementa Avenue. So the last major project we had. So what we're looking at this year is to take advantage of some of the increase in our base to be able to increase the funds that we have available for capital improvement to, to lay in those, the funds for those ahead of time so that we do not have to levy those as property taxes against those people along those areas. Otherwise, they have to be levied as a tax, tax increase in that year that the project goes on. If, that, if it goes under code 429 funding, 20% of it has to be levied as a tax. So in order not to have you have a surprise tax bill we want to save ahead for those projects that we know are coming to build that capital improvement project and be able to take care of infrastructure as those projects come up and that's predominantly what we've done well some of these are enterprise projects though too right like the new well house that we come out of our water bills and we are looking at funds for them. some of those projects are too big to go into a to a, just our capital improvement fund because that's a small fund it's not a huge fund but those projects, Sean will be seeking funding for those as funding comes up. And some of the projects that are on our capital improvement plan will necessitate having additional funding before we can do them, simply because they're too big to do for us to, to handle as a small as a project. But you are right, Evan, that there is some there that have to be paid by rates. Uh, the water tower, well house, um, portions of the uh, utility underground utilities on the old part of town here. Um, we're looking very, very carefully at that to see where, where the levy portion of it funds what it needs to fund, and the enterprise funds fund what they need to fund as far as the utility side of it. Mr. Mayor, are there any other? Uh, reasons for the 10% interest other than the capital improvement fund? Major reasons for that increase? No. It's the capital improvement fund is where <coughs> okay. yeah. the difference between last year and this year is about ninety is about ninety two thousand, ninety three thousand. And if you look here where it says general capital projects, we're putting one hundred and thirty four thousand five hundred. And last year I think we put thirty thousand in there. So it's it's generally right there. Yep. And, my, and my, the second comment I have is that last week I was at Hanover City Council and I looked for it and I can't find it, but they had the list of all of the Wright County cities and their tax rate and they all hover between, Hanover was, was they wanted to keep theirs at 49.5. They also don't have a water or sewer system to manage. They have an outside, that comes from St. Michael. Mm -hmm. um, and, but they all hover between 50, and 55, 56 percent, except for South Haven, which is like 80. 
they yes. all follow pretty even, and then that one's way up there. And I, I don't know if it's because the tax capacity is so low and the services they have to provide as a city. Thank you, Doug. Any further? Any other questions? Yes. Please. I just have a question maybe Wendy may will answer because none of you guys were here at that point. And just on a personal note, I think what I'm hearing, I, I think you guys have done a good job. Um, but I'm wondering with capital improvement, why during the boom years, why would the council at that point not, I mean, when the money was there, when there was a lot of it, why didn't they put money aside then for these types of things? Because, I mean, we're only talking, you know, 10 years ago. So something that's, you know, 80 years old now was still 70 years old then. They had to know that. If you look historically you know, during the boom years, 2005, 6, and 7, there were pretty significant tax increases during those years that were, that were pretty healthy. I think, you know, one of them was 25%, if I remember right. But so the they were pretty yeah, healthy. Because the tax capacity, um, at that time, the tax capacity grew in such a huge leap that, but since 2009, um, yeah, it's been zero, I think, or yeah. I think the highest was. I think we, this is only like maybe the third increase in taxes since 2009. Yeah, I no, I'm not complaining about that. I just wondered why nobody had the foresight, you know, 10 years ago to start putting money aside for these things so that you guys could be doing these projects now. Well, well I can, I can I I answer that, Drew. Yeah, that would be um, awesome. <laughs> 10 years ago, the capital improvement plan was to pay existing debt. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, we had so much existing debt that uh, the reserves that we had were used to pay that. And so it's been, that's why you're not seeing a tax rate increase since 2009, or small ones since 2009, sorry. I misspoke there. So that was pretty much the philosophy from the council back then was the capital improvement plan was to pay existing debt. Now, we're kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel from this, and things are starting to drop off as far as payment wises, or they will in the very near future. So this is the time to start planning for where we're going to get our next well from, where are we going to have our next well house for the next 50 years. We've got an 80 year old water tower that's going to cost more to rehab than it is to build a new one. What are we going to do? So that's, this is why we're doing what we're doing. And in 2008, when everything came to a screeching halt, the tax capacity actually dropped. Mm -hmm. So that's why we didn't do anything for so long, because it would have really made a big increase in everybody's taxes. <coughs> so we tried to stay just you know flat. Anything further? Motion to move to open session.
canvassing meeting, personnel committee meeting, the special personnel committee meeting, uh, council budget meeting, um, the uh, EOC you know, for the gas outage at Excel Energy, uh, the VFW meeting, flag retirement ceremony for our fifth Eagle Scout this year with Boy Scouts, uh, taught at College of Commissioner Science, and breakfast with Santa, Santa event for group, group meetings. <coughs> Um, I also attended the flag retirement ceremony, which was really cool. Um, we had our um, Thanksgiving baskets um, for all the service members for Beyond the Yellow Ribbon. Um, yeah, that was that was a really good time. Um, the budget workshop. Council meetings, budget meetings, personnel meetings. Uh, special meetings and uh, WCAP meetings. Kevin? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, included in your packet is the November activity report. questions on that they can answer. I'd like to direct your attention to the acknowledgments. I'd just like to acknowledge Joanne Faust for her assistance throughout the year with the fire department projects. She was always a very uh, beneficial ear to help us through some planning stages and getting grants and things like that. So I'd just like to acknowledge her publicly at this meeting tonight. Any questions? Thank you. Um, next item, um, AED grant. So I'll just read the news release that's going to get put in the next uh, paper here. On um, well, today, Montrose Fire Department was awarded an automatic electronic defibrillator or an AED through a grant program sponsored by the Shakopee, Mitawakan Sioux community. Chief Kevin Triplett received the award at the Mitawakan Public Safety Facility located near Mystic Lake Casino in Prior Lake. The Shakopee, Mitawakan community awarded a Hard Start FRX automatic electronic defibrillator valued at $2,250. The new AED will be placed into service immediately and will replace one of the department's older AEDs. The Shakopee Midwalken Sioux community has awarded over 1,500 AEDs over the past several years in support of organizations who utilize these life saving tools. The Shakopee Midwalken Sioux community owns and operates two major casinos in the South Metro, the largest being the Mystic Lake Casino. Montrose Fire Department is grateful for the award of the AED and would like to thank the Shakopee Midwalken Sioux community for the generous donation. So we just got it today, and it'll be put in service for tomorrow sometime. So thanks to them, I guess. What will you do with the old one that keep that in service? That one will be kept in service as well. It'll get rotated to one that more than likely, hopefully, will never get used. And we hope that none of these will ever get used. We rerun, it's about 1.3 cardiac arrest events per year. Um, so our hope is that they'll never get used. But um, the one that's this one here replaced will be put on our engine, so for community aid communities or for firefighters at the scene of a fire or something like that. So it's going to be that. Well needed, so. Uh, the next item in your packet is emergency management question and answer. I just wanted to put this in there due to the recent events that are fresh in our mind due to the recent gas outage that we experienced. Um, overall, as the emergency management director and um, from being involved in the emergency service world for the past 20 or so years, basically since I was about 10 years old, I've been playing around in it. Um, in my eyes and, and the way that I see things work in other communities, what happened here was uh, great overall compared to what I've seen some other uh, communities and stuff suffer with. Uh, Excel Energy classified this as a very major incident. They don't experience these often they don't anticipate to experience one again. Um, it was very similar to something that happened up in Buffalo two or three years ago. And there was a lot of issues that went along with that one. Um, everything worked very smoothly. I'd like to commend city staff for coming in um, to help with things. Council for being online with Greg or myself um, while we were at the EOC and working through things. Keeping comments and opinions and assumptions to a minimum on social media was uh, a great benefit for me because I wasn't having to put out fires that other people were starting at times, whether it was community members, council members, city staff, other city um, personnel, or people from Waverly or outside. 
Um, it was overall from the entire community, it was a great response. Everybody had very great questions for the most part, very little negativity. Um, for us never having actually operated in an emergency incident such as that, I was very impressed with everyone's um, output. So with that, if there's any questions at this time, I can answer them, I hope. If not, I will find the answers out. I'd like to say a big thank you to Scott Johnson, who was the uh, public affairs representative for XL Energy. And to XL Energy, the workers that came in, they called in over 100 teams, so something close to 300, 350 people to work on this event. Um, and they lost pressure in the line, that's why they had to be restarted, um, was the reason for everything having to be cut off to repressurize the lines and then restart. Um, it was a good thing to have a control on the social media. That was really good. Um, I have to thank Sean and Jeff, uh, Jason for coming out right away and, and being there to, to do whatever was needed and be prepped to bring some of the emergency stock 